Today on Top Shops, we're going to be talking combine maintenance with Rodney Edgington of Ulysses, Kansas. Rodney is the founder and operator of Combine Specialties, has worked on, it's fair to say, hundreds of combines of different colors. That's right. Um, in the time that you've had the business going. And you're going to give us some tips to look for, uh, preseason maintenance repair tips on combines before you hit the field. And we're going to focus today on threshing and separation uh, on that part of the combine. Now, when we get into the threshing part, we've, we've taken delivery from the feeder house, which we've covered in another segment. Uh, it's coming in. What are the key elements to look for when you've pulled off the panels and you're looking inside there? Well, some of the first things uh, when it converges from the feeder house into the separator, the threshing system is uh, obvious your impellers are the first thing on your rotor. Right. Um, you want to make sure you look in there and make sure all the hardware is still attached. Uh, missing hardware, you know, causes balance problems. Um, make sure the weights that are still attached to, make sure you don't have any loose weights because that'll throw balance problems. Right. Um, check the leading edge of those impellers. Uh, you know, for any wear issues, excessive wear, mm -hmm. um, any damage cracks along the front of that rotor, of the housing of the, the piece that holds all the impellers in there, that's, that's a good first step to look at. You were saying that vibration, threshing vibration, well, it's one element anymore as right. one big cylinder, that's one of the, the leading complaints you get from farmers? I do, I get a lot of complaints from vibration. A lot of it could be uh, vibration because of wear on your ass bars or your impellers. Okay. Could be your tines, you have a broken tine, maybe four or five tines on the back end of your rotor. Mm -hmm. It could be as far as a rotor bearing out or um, maybe your gearbox has problems. It could be a maintenance an issue when you get vibration problems. It could be one or the other and you don't know which one it is until you take a closer look. Now we transition, we're into the threshing part. Is it primarily just rasp bars that you're looking for for wear? Um, when I look at wear on a rotor, I'm looking at the leading edge or the threshing edge of the rasp bars. The front, um, at your, the front part of the rotor. Right, where, where you've got your teeth, you know, you're, you, you have smooth bar, five bar, nine bar. Um, you know, you look at bolt wear, mm -hmm. you look at the wear uh, on the rotor itself, make sure that the, the welds are all good because you'll actually have abrasive material come across the, the rotor itself and, and wear down the rotor. How much wear can a rasp bar take before you got to replace it? You know, I've seen rasp bars work with holes in them. And I've seen, I've <laughs> seen smooth bars put in a small grain combine and they work. So that's, that's a very debatable question because I've seen some pretty wore out combines and I've seen guys that want to put brand new rasp bars in every year. Yeah. Um, my opinion, my suggestion is most OEM dealers have a indicator tool. That is what I follow in my inspections. If it passes, it passes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, and you that's know, and basically that's, to measure it's, the, the It's depth the width of, of the depth of the, the rasp bar itself right. or, yeah. or the length of the tine or the width of the concave bar. Um, and, and those indicators are relatively inexpensive and, and they're, they, they really show a lot to, to a guy. If, if, they're, if, if they're within that range, it, it's not just the OEMs wanting to sell more parts, it, it truly is p performance issue at that point. It, it'll, if they're wore that much, it's time to do it. What else in the threshing area should a person look for beyond the rasp bars and the concave? That's, that's basically it, or do, do you look at uh, the, uh, other aspects of that. You know, I look, when I do an inspection, I look, I look at everything, uh, concave supports, concave mounts, the bolts that hold onto the concaves. I want to check for wear points to make sure that that's going to adjust up and down. You know, there's a lot of, we are talking about uh, wads of material going through that takes a lot of you know, impact, impact and mm -hmm. vibration in that uh, concave system. Uh, I've seen the fronts of concave, you pull the front concave out and it's actually wore into the front uh, front say. gear, the front head of the, of the combine. Right. I'll, I'll weld it up and, 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 uh, and fix it or sometimes you have to replace that piece. But um, any of the pivot points on the concave support, um, a lot of times they, some guys might move it quite a bit or the vibration might cause some wear points and it lets the concave set at a level. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, you want that concave level so it, it, it thrashes correctly from front to back. So now we've transitioned, now we're inspecting the separation area, like on a deer combine, what are you gonna be looking for? It's the, the tines, right? Right, uh, the tines on a deer, uh, separator bars on a case. Um, but what you're looking for on the tines is make sure there's no damage. Uh, a lot of times the first row and the back row will damage because of debris coming through rocks or broken feeder house slats or something you run ingestion that you did on your combine. Um, you want to make sure that the, you say if you had an indicator gauge, you can check to make sure the length is right. They're really hard, really, dece really deceiving, uh, knowing that they're wore out. Sometimes they'll- On the tines, right? Right. Because they kind of wear down evenly. Right, they wear down evenly the whole way. So uh, sometimes it's deceiving which, if they're wore out or not. And you'll find even bro broken teeth once in a while and bars that are pretty right. well bent. I don't right. think you'd have broken bars on the Case IHD. Yeah, sometimes you'll see them broke or, or teeth knocked off. Uh, you're usually made by one solid piece, either chromium or uh, just mild steel, the hardened steel. Um, but the, uh, sometimes the chromium ones will, will definitely uh, get brittle and snap off. But uh, it is important to make sure that they're they're all adequate and yeah. perform into their function. So. Do we see much wear when it comes to the separator grates? You know, I don't see a lot of wear when it comes to grates. I do see a lot of damage. Sometimes you'll like say ingestion through the combine will damage a grate. Oh. Uh, the concaves happen to be strong enough or thick enough. They usually go on through. Well, so they won't da damage the grates on the concaves. Well, they won't, they, they will damage the concave, but normally they don't punch through a concave. But oh. the, the great separator grates are usually made of a different material. Oh. So sometimes they're, they're more of a cast uh, right. cast material. So that sometimes they'll bust through those. Um, on the red machines, they have <laughs> two different style of grates you can run. That's when you're harvesting fence posts, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So. Anything else on the separator that we should look for? Or even the drive system of the, of the rotor itself? Right. Um, one of the key factors of a rotor is the rotor belt, the rotor mm -hmm. drive. A uh, gearbox, make sure it's full of oil, uh, proper viscosity of oil. Um, I check that, I, I recommend checking that on a daily basis. And, and, and make sure that your, if your rotor belt is, is not stretched out. Pulleys and uh, drives, uh, uh, cogs and like that on the drive uh, system is they really rarely wear out or is it more of a bearing issue that you want to look for there um, mostly belts a lot of belts will have uh, chipping or cracks a in lot the belt of, in, in the belt itself right. um, that's usually where I see most of the damage or most of the wear any other supporting things we had to look at the structure itself both in the threshing and separation area uh, basically the framing and the mountings. Do you even ever look at that or is there anything can you I do, I, I look at all the, the gussets on the, all the welds, every, every frame um, as a repairman, I, I, I look at that type of stuff. They, they can have structural cracks along the oh, frame of those. Now, Rodney, for more information about combine specialties, your business, where could a person go to contact you? Well, the best place would be uh, at combinespecialties.com. Your website, then. My, res my website, yes. Right. Yeah. And you just don't do combines, do you? No, I don't. I do, I do everything ag equipment, tractors, you know, tractors and uh, grain carts, you know, anything, yeah. anything ag related. So, so uh, yeah. all your repair and maintenance needs in yep. Western Kansas, Engines. Eastern Colorado, right. this yep. is the place Engines, to Engines, transmissions, uh, you name it, I can do it. So. Okay. Well, we'll see you again next week on another Top Shop Tour. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already, and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video. And click here to see more great videos.